Hey guys, how are you? I am deciding to jump over onto uh, YouTube Live for something of a change and I have just spent the last few minutes, it asks you when you go live to smile for the camera and it takes a photo for your preview and I've sort of, no, that one looks like rubbish, this one looks like rubbish, so ah, this is the card that we're going to make today. So. I, I didn't plan on doing a Father's Day card, but it has sort of um, stepped up to be that way. Hopefully that's around the right way for you. Now I'm just going to take a few minutes and try and find myself on my iPad so that I can watch you, uh, watch you, <laughs> that would be a little bit weird now, wouldn't it? So that I can see any comments um, as we're chatting together. And the other thing is, um, oh, I should have had my, I can't see, I can't see because my phone is covering my iPad now. Um, I think you need to be logged into YouTube, into your account uh, in order to chat. So I'm just going to see whether I can actually, I'm just going to do a test because as you can tell, I'm pretty spontaneous when I do these things and I want to be able to see what I'm doing and you are all my guinea pigs. So I hope you don't mind. So if you, um, um, excuse me, I'm, I, I have to be quite aware of that every time I lean forward, you guys get a really good face full of my face and it's not such a good thing, um, but I do have to lean forward, actually maybe I'll do that afterwards, I have to lean forward to pull my iPad down, I've got it set up too high on my stand. So anyway, we have had a massive two and a half days of getting up at like, I think the first time I got up was... Um, quarter past five in the morning. Yesterday was 3.30 in the morning. Hi, Sandra. Yesterday was 3.30 in the morning and like leadership went for seven to, actually it went for a lot longer than that. I think I finally got to have a little bit of a nap at 4 p.m. that day, but um, but we got to hang out in, um, I guess it would be equivalent to hanging out in somebody's hotel room afterwards, but we hung out in a chat group um, with Robin Carden from My Pink Stamper. And uh, so while we were chatting business and, and all that sort of stuff, I actually made a card, which is what I'm going to share with you today. So let us not waffle so much. And I'm cold, so I've got my my 20 year old quilt that I made 20 odd years ago um, on my lap. So I've just got to stand up to swing um, us around and uh, cross fingers because every time I've tried to do a Facebook Live in the past and I've turned my camera around, something has gone wrong with it. So crossing fingers that nothing changes, the feed doesn't change and we're all good. So I, you will see my roof, which is not a really good thing to see either, but um, all right, I'm just going to put my hand here and flip. Oh dear. Are we? Oh no. Oh, I thought for a second that I was upside down, but it's just my ink pad upside down. Phew, I had a little heart attack then. I was like, no, no, how do I fix that? I'm just going to bring you in closer because like I said, um, you guys don't want to see a face full of me. <laughs> it's not a good look. Now I'm just gonna rearrange me this. So, oh, this is see I whoops whoops whoops. I need to be a little bit more organised. But you guys, if you know me, you know that I am super spontaneous and I do things on the fly. They don't always work out for me, but that's okay. Let's just have a bit. Whoa, whoa. Okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna press anything more. Oh my goodness. Okay, and I've just got to work out where I am. So we are going to be using the Summer Days um, stamp set, which is actually a hostess. I shouldn't say a hostess. We don't use that term anymore. A host stamp. So this one you can actually purchase. Uh, let me get my catalogue in here. You can purchase this one if you um, meet the party requirements, which in Australia is $250. So if you have a $250 order or you decide that you want to have a little catalogue party and you reach the limit, you can actually purchase this one for $22 and it has a value of $44 at it. So you can get this one for pretty well half price. And uh, so I thought I would have a little bit of a colouring in session yesterday. I was feeling a bit tired and uh, colouring in always makes me feel good. So let's, I'm going to use my Stamparatus for this one. 
Um, just because I like to, when I'm working with watercolour paper, I, which is what I'm using today, I like to have um, the ability to stamp the black several times. So if you're coming in, hello Robin, if you're coming in, say hello. I would love to know where you are from. Are you from um, my part of the world or elsewhere? So I'm just going to line that up and, oh, I didn't clean it very well. Look at that. <gasps> I thought that might happen. I'm, I'm pretty bad at cleaning things as well. Shh. I'm a messy stamper. Let's, oh, okay. So I'm going to ink it up on stay, with stays on because I am using watercolour paper and watercolour means that we need to have um, a permanent black ink and as you've known Perth Sandra as you know you've probably heard me say before opposites attract so when using watercolor we want stays on or a permanent black and when we're using our blends we want uh, a water-based because we want alcohol and water so opposites attract when it comes to stamping your black outline so you can see how this one's pretty dark and I just want it um, it, sorry, light. I'm just going to, oh, and look what I've done. Let's turn it over. You probably can't see that, but um, I obviously slipped because I don't use the magnets. So let's have another crack at that. So I hope you've all got time this afternoon because I absolutely have no idea how long this is going to take. Um, we are watercolouring, if you haven't guessed. And I do tend to watercolour, oh, cross fingers, cross fingers. I do tend to take my time when I watercolour. And I also have trouble talking when I colour. So you guys get really chatty with me so um, I can answer questions. And I'm just going to go one more time right in the middle there. I sort of want it a little bit dark in there. So that's the bonus of the Stamper uh, Radis. I was going to call it my Stamper with Jake over here. Um, oh, I'm glad you caught me live for the first time. Seems like this one might be a good time slot. So the great thing about the, um, the Stamper Radis is that we get to um, stamp it several times because I like a really, really dark face. And I'm actually going to, because I'm going to clean my stamp later. I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to put that there. And just pop that away now if you haven't seen our new uh, water painters these are great um, they come in a pack of three so you get a fine a medium and a really wide brush which you can see I've been playing with my wide brush there I've taken the water out because my water turned green so I thought I better empty that out but we're going to just use the fine one today for what we need now I am going to be using quite a few colors so this is probably going to be a little bit more on the master class type of coloring so like I said we'll see how far we go if, if my coloring is taking too long I'll just show you my card again and explain what I've done um, and I might recreate it again for a standalone video Oh, take a breath. Okay, so I'm going to do the tree trunks first and I'm going to use crumb cake, soft suede and early espresso. So like I said, this is going to be a full on watercoloring um, technique, not just a real quick one. I'm just going to see if I can zoom in just a tiny bit more. I like it. I like you to be able to see what I'm doing properly. So you're just squeezing my ink pads and you'll notice that I have a mixture of old and, and new ink pads. Um, so you'll have to excuse me for that. So just squeezing the ink pad and you can do that with all of the ink pads, just squeezing it together so that I get a bit of a, a puddle happening here in the middle. Now I do want to keep this one quite soft. So I'm happy to just use the puddle that's in the middle of the, um, that I get from the lid. So sometimes if I want to go quite heavy, I will add a drop of reinker and um, that will sort of intensify my colors. So again, if you are just dropping in, say hello, get chatty with me. I love to, once I get chatting, I sort of get on a roll, but um, yeah, I can, I can talk a, a little bit. Get me, get me started and I'll chat away. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just lay down 
my first color and I get breathless when I talk and do lives as well. So I'm just going to paint my, just nothing fancy about the first layer. So crumb cake going down and these ones are a little bit harder to see. I think there's actually two right beside each other. Now, of course they get smaller and finer which is where the fine tipped uh, of this brush comes really in handy because you can get really really fine detail. But they have taken me a little bit to get used to um, from our last aqua painters that we had but once you get the hang of them it's quite good. I haven't played with the medium one yet. Okay so that was relatively painless, pain free. Our next colour that we're coming in with is our soft suede. So what has everybody been doing today? Okay, so I am coming in with my soft suede and what I sort of, you have to sort of vision a little bit and I'm thinking that the insides, because we've got a little bit of a path that goes um, leading through, I'm thinking that the shadows would be towards the inside and they would get darker as we go back because it's getting, um, you know, there's less sunlight coming through. So I'm actually, I don't, I don't know whether this is true or not, I'm not professional, but I'm going to paint my shadow on the inside near the lane. So I'm just going to add a little bit of soft suede to the inside of the trunk. And it's harder as you go a little bit further on but you don't need as much detail and then of course on the other side I'm going to do it on the other side of the tree trunk okay and then I usually have a paper towel beside me and then you can just go back and blend that in if you don't want that harsh line. Okay, and now for my final colour, you could leave it as that if you wanted to, but I'm just going to add a touch of early espresso. And uh, hello, Belinda. And I'm just going to paint the early espresso right on the edge of the line facing towards the lane. So you can see how that's darkened up between the two. It's just given that little bit of extra depth to our tree trunk. And of course you can probably only do the, you know, three of them before you start to lose what's going on down here. And then again on the opposite side. So hands up if you love colouring and, and your favourite medium of colouring. Are you a, an alcohol marker person or are you a watercolour person? Okay. I'm going to pop them just behind me. Now I'm going to do the tree trunks, uh, the tree trunks, the leaves on the trees next, but I'm going to colour them in a slightly different way. I'm not going to do the normal. So I'm going to use um, Purposaz can't see, Pepperzaz, Old Olive and some Mossy Meadow in there as well. Okay, so love your blends. They are pretty good. I get, um, I love my blends as well. Okay, so we're going to start with pear pizzazz, and I am going to have to squeeze a little bit of water into my lid just to get a little bit of flow going on. And this is quite um, a different, oh, pencils. You know, what? I haven't used my pencils for such a long time. Okay, so we just want a little bit of wet palette going on here. And what I'm going to do, instead of giving a, a, a good old colouring like I just did for the brushes, I'm actually just going to pounce um, my brush on there and sort of give it a little bit of texture. So this might take me a little bit of time. So let's have a little bit more of a chatter. So those who do watercolouring, do you prefer um, 
watercolor paper or do you prefer to use the shimmer card because I sometimes find that the shimmer card gives me a really good look as well. And then I always think, well, you guys are going to get bored out of your brains watching me do this. So just blooping away. We sort of, all our leaves sort of come together towards the centre here. So we just um, straight through. And this is where you need to keep adding a little bit of water because your, your brush and stuff tends to keep drying out a little bit. So the water helps just to keep the flow going and you can speed it up a little bit that way. Okay, and I'm just going to add a little bit extra around the bottom. Just if I've got any white spots, just try and fill them in a little bit more. Just like so. I think that's enough. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same with my old olive. But this time, if you can try and... Imagine again, I don't know whether this is true or not or whether I've got my imagination going haywire, but I sort of think that the sun would might be coming down from the top or from the sides and I feel like I just want to have less of the old olive up the top but more down towards the bottom of the trees where perhaps the undergrowth would be a little bit um, darker. The sun wouldn't be getting through so much, perhaps. Uh, yeah, well, I I hadn't planned on doing Father's Day card to tell you the truth. I know that's really bad. But um, I was looking at the colours I'd used in this card and then I thought, oh, Father's Day is just around the corner. Um, hang on a minute. Is it, is it, do you guys in America, do you guys have Father's Day at the same time as we do? Ours is the first uh, Sunday in September, which I think is next week. So... Um, but I know that you guys have Mother's Day. Mother's Day? You have something at a different time, and I'm not sure which one it is. But we have Father's Day next um, next week. Right, I think I'm done with my dark green there too. So you can see the little bit of difference. You might, now looking at the screen, I sort of think that I want to just add a tiny bit up Um Sometimes walking away from your work and then coming back, you can sort of see, like, this is handy because I can actually look up and, and see a different view of my work and tell me that I just want to pop a little bit of that colour into the, into the top bits of the areas. Okay, so now I'm coming in with my Mossy Meadow and I'm doing the same thing again. And again, I just want to keep my Mossy Meadow towards the undergrowth. Um, add a bit of water just helps these little dots otherwise if you don't add water to it when you're just trying to pounce that brush it just doesn't want to you want a little bit of flow so we're just going to pounce it around the bottom back towards where it's all bushy Okay, how's that looking? I think we might just come up a little bit. And that sort of gives us a little bit of texture in our trees as well. So that's looking pretty good. I'll leave those two greens there, I'll need them. Now, I don't want my card to be all browns and greens. So for my little lane here, I'm going to use some greys. 
So I will use another way Sahara sand. Oh my goodness, look how daggy that one is. Sahara sand, grey granite, and smoky slate. Okay, so they will be the colours that I'm going to use for that. Make sure my hands are clean. I have a habit of smudging stuff everywhere. So using the Sahara sand first, and this one will just go back to normal watercolouring. We won't have any um, texture or anything going on. So we can just colour that one pretty well straight away. Lay it down, and the first one doesn't take so much. And where the, where the image ends, I'll just bring it out um, level with that. So that was pretty quick. Grey granite is next. And I'm just going to edge my lane here. And our artist has drawn a couple of lines. So I'm just going to go over them as well. And then finally again with the smoky slate just to give that bit more depth going on. If I can figure out how to open my ink pad would be handy. <laughs> and once again, just along the edge there. And the great things about these really fine um, nibs on these water painters, water brushes, is that you can just pick up really fine amounts of ink. Okay, that one's done now too. We're getting there. Okay, I need to bring back my pear and my old olive, but I don't want to bring the same green, dark green that I had in because in nature our, our lawn's probably a different colour to our leaves. So I am going to bring in my garden green as my darker color so and that way I can still use when I make my final card I can still tie in um, a like I used old olive because I've used old olive in everything else I could have used uh, pear pizzazz or old olive um, as you know to coordinate with my card so again I'm just gonna color this one all down Squeeze works quite nicely with a bit of water. So in this one I can be a little bit jiggly. And I sort of think as we go down in our lane looking down, I sort of feel that it would be darker as we look down the alley that the the, uh, the laneway. So down there is where we can go a little bit darker. Now I'm going to come out, um, try and come level with the edge of my tree. Like so. I don't think I came out far enough the first time I made my card. So there we go. Now the second colour going down is going to be Old Olive and this one will be a little bit more on the patchier side because where the lines have been drawn, I just sort of want to pounce my Old Olive onto these areas. Around the base of the tree trunks, along the edge of the lane just to give it a little bit of texture. Are we all still watching? <laughs> Everyone's so quiet. I feel like I'm chatting to myself, but that's okay. Okay, so the third color I'm going to bring in is my garden green, and it will be a little bit different. Um, 
because it's such a brighter color as well I was going to use shaded spruce and then I thought no you good enough so I'm just you can probably see in my lid here I'm just going to add a little bit of water but I'm just going to try and keep I'm not going to stay away from that area and I'm going to stay away from these darker areas here I just sort of want a quite a muted green so I'm just going to pick a few areas to go over mainly around the tree trunks and I'm going to bring it a little bit darker along as we get towards the back and just sort of pounce it around a little bit because I don't want to change the color of my green I just want to differentiate it a little bit between my um, my trees and if your nib starts to split like mine has just give it a squeeze of water through and pull it back into a nice point. Just along the edge, towards the back. Okay, so you can see how we've got a little bit of difference going on between our out of room I should put them away as I go but um, I'm gonna forget I'm gonna forget what order my I've still got my ink pads in a rotating one and I'm gonna lose order of them <laughs> if you keep things like I do I'm keep them on a, in a rainbow spectrum rather than color families okay so for um good we're all very green and brown here we're going to use some balmy blue to put in um, as our sky so I am just going to make this quite watery so you can see um, you can see that I use these all the time I rarely have to squeeze my ink pads anymore because I've pretty well got stuff going in there all the time so I'm just making that quite a watery puddle going on there and I'm going to do in between my branches first so I'm just going to dab that in gently and the other great bonus about having it um, a super fine brush like this is that I can actually get in between all these little spaces without um, bleeding my colours. So don't forget to go in between the tree trunks up the top there. Okay, And then rather than paint, I'm just going to sort of plod my pounce and plod my uh, brush on there. Okay, I'm just going to bring it out just to the edge there and I'm not going to come up I'm not going to do either side I'm going to leave that and then I'm just going to swing around and I'm going to make myself just a little square top. Yeah I like I like to dab especially for my sky um, going around um, I don't know why I just I prefer a dabbing motion going around and I think it helps control rather than this, if, if I was painting like this and coloring in I think it helps me stay away from the other colors that are already down so that I don't get any bleeding so I'm just going to square this off at the top a little bit and then what I can do is just come in with a little bit darker area and pull that color into my little puddle so it sort of intensifies that a little bit and then you can go back and add a little bit more depth in between and just around the, the edges if you want so just around not so much into the although these areas are so small it doesn't really matter um, but along the top here what I will do is just hug the outline and sort of let it fade and it will sort of give me a little bit of a watercolour look as well. And you can keep building them up. If you want to keep getting it a little bit darker, you can keep building it up. But I am, uh, I think I'm pretty well done now. So you can try and square, I don't know, but you know what, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to be too fussed. Um, about that so does anybody want me to continue on and actually make the full card or shall I just describe the card I'm happy to do both I have time set aside 
I'll just wait. I think there's a bit of a delay, so I will just, yep, yes, go ahead, make the full card. Okay, let me just pull back because I am so, oh, I am so sorry about that. This is so sensitive. Right. <laughs> it was like it's like the psychedelic stuff going on there. Apologies for that. Okay, so I am just going to trim this now. I'm pretty sure that I, oops, I am dry. Um, just okay cool awesome I'm glad that you all want to stay here and watch me make cards so I'm just going to trim I want it to be I, ooh, what do I want it to be I think I did seven centimeters I have to get my ruler out now so yep seven centimeters or in inches it's uh what does that work out to be um it's there you can tell I don't work in inches. So what's that? Two and three quarters um, is what I roughly want to get. So I'm just going to trim. Oh, that's a bit daggy. I need my little paper trimmer out by seven. There we go. Just press down a little bit firmer. And the length of the card, I'm just going to leave the same. Oh, you know what else we need? We used to have a tool that would, it's like a little sanding block that would get rid of the fluffies. Leanne, hello. Hello to all, everyone who's come in. See, I, you know what, we should, because I can't see who's coming in. With Facebook, you can see who's coming in, and, and uh, but with this one, you can't. So I need to say, when you come in, say hello, say your name. Okay, what else do I need? Oh, fluffies. Fluffies, fluffies. Okay, now I'm a little bit odd and I do my card making. I'm in Australia, so our we have the A4 size. So cut your card in half. Um, I do long ways. Even though it's I'm doing a landscape card, I still cut it long ways for some reason and it opens up like a book rather than um, a top fold. Anyway, I cut my card. So I cut it in half, which is 10 centimetres. And then I cut it at 26 centimetres and I score at 13. So my overall card size is now 10 and a half by 13, not the usual 10 and a half by 14.9 or whatever it is. So it gives me a little bit more of not such a tall, long rectangle, but more of a short squarish rectangle. And I think it's closer to that of a US size. So I actually find it easier, oh, what have I done? I find it easier to um, fill, I think, balance-wise, I actually get a better look um, doing it that way. Okay, so that's 10 and a half by 26 folded in half gives us 10 and a half, or 13 by 10 and a half. Now I'm going to come in with some old olive and I'm going to cut it at 13 centimetres because that's the width of our card. And I think I did, oh, I think I did eight. What did I do? I think I did eight and a half centimetres, which is three inches and a quarter and a bit. I would just do three and a quarter inches just to, you know, save it. And if you are working in US, then yeah, see five inches, you would just do it five inches five inches by what's my total card size by just over five inches by four inches so it's a it's more of a similar card to um, a US size rather than a traditional Australian size okay and then I am still on my little run I instead of layering I have decided that I just like to put a little strip of um, it's sort of a full layer, just a little strip of card underneath. I don't know. It just looks good. So this is just a scrap that I pulled out of my filing cabinet. And I'm just going to cut it at one and a half centimetres. So, um, and this is also, you know, you always have little scraps and stuff like this. So this type of layering is really handy for that because you can use up all your little bits of scraps. And if you're wondering, it is oh, just over two inches. That's two and a half. That's two and a quarter. So it's, oh, well, there you go. It's two and a quarter inches by, is that three quarters? 
nearly three quarters doesn't matter it's just a scrap you're only going to see a tiny bit of it or five and a half by one and a half it's just honestly it's just for a little bit of a scrap I really like this stamp set too this you know this is so nice this turned into a masculine card I didn't plan out for it to be a masculine card but if you wanted it to be a feminine one you could use this one with the little book reader or put some apples in there and then you could paint them red or pink and then you could pull in some pink um, to make it a girly card but uh, okay let's get moving I assume that all my pieces are the right size yep okay where is my adhesive gone there we go my new stampin seal I keep saying stampin steel and I've got to get away from that if you started at the beginning I made boo-boo so that's why and if, if your roller gets stuck just I just give it a little bit of a a roll so I'm, you can see there it was sticky so I give it a little bit of a roll and a flick and I hope I stuck it on the wrong side so I'm just going to adhere that see it's just for it's just for show so it doesn't really matter how wide you make it you just want it wide enough that it covers your adhesive and I just think it adds a nice little rather than layer the whole thing just to add a little bit to the side there I think is quite different so then I'm going to adhere this. This is where the card comes together real quick and I love it. I love that once you figure out what map you're going to do, boom, it just all comes together. And look how, look how sticky this is. Like, argh, pull my skin off. And I'm going to, instead of centering it, I'm actually going to put it closer to the top than the bottom so I'm, I'm just going to butt it up against the side there oh hang on a minute I think I've done I cut something wrong you know what I did hang on a minute let me see let me see if I can resurrect because I've put an awful lot of I've put an awful lot of sticky down but you know what that's okay our card my card's just going to look a little bit different to my original one I think I trimmed my sides but that's okay it's just a little different okay so how look it just adds a little bit of extra without you know just using that scraps I don't know I like it do you know what I think I might have to trim that you know what I'm not going to... <laughs> I can't make up my mind today maybe I'm still sleep deprived oh, oh no I've run out I think I've run out Oh, no, I haven't. Oh, phew. I was going to say, I didn't prepare myself. I'm holding it on a wrong angle. And then I'm going to adhere this to my card base, but I am also going to put it closer to the top than the bottom. I'm not going to actually center it. I'm just going to, oh, no, no, you see, it's not what I wanted to do. I actually wanted to put some linen thread around it. Oh, this is going to make it awkward. Um, how am I going to do this? now that I've got sticky all over it who else does this right who else always manages to <clears throat> muck things up <clears throat> it's okay if you're doing it at home but when you're um, on a camera it's not <laughs> such a good thing to do <laughs> so now I'm gonna have to be tricky and oh dear how am I gonna hold this at least I know my twine won't move. <laughs> Please tell me I'm not the only one who does this type of stuff. I would really, really love to know. All right. Snip some. I need to get some more twine. I need to, I need to start a shopping list. I need, does anybody else have a, have a shopping list, a Stampin' Up shopping list going? Oh, I'm trying to not put it on. I'm trying not to put it down because I know that it'll stick to my grid paper <laughs> or if I am putting it down I'm just going so lightly oh there we go oh okay that'll be enough that'll get me going so now I'm gonna stick it down there we go L is not lost now who ties bows for guys does anybody tie bows for guys I'm going to tie a bow in. 
Yeah, that's right. It doesn't matter, does it? You know what? And when I when we were having our teaching classes, um, when I could do them, I would teach. I I would volunteer up at our um, local Uniting Church every Wednesday, and I would teach card making in a class. And you know, they some of the ladies would say, "Oh, well, my card's not the same as yours." And I'm like, "Hello, the person that you're giving your card to hasn't seen my card. They don't know if it's completely different." Oh, yes, a silicon sheet would have been perfect, wouldn't it? I could have used a silicon sheet. I have one, yes. I didn't even think about that. Okay, so I'm tying a bow even for a sky. Now, I did stamp and emboss, and I have one here already, but I'm not sure whether I want two Father's Day cards. Um, I'm not sure. I should send one to my dad. We don't normally do cards and things. So, but just in case you're wondering, I might not stick that on. I might just sort of hold it there and show you. But the greeting has come from the Itty Bitty Greetings. And there are like 32 little, I love little greetings. I just love them. You can stick them over the top of your work and not, you know, take away from all the colouring that you did. And it's just, I just love them. So I have used the world's best father and I have white embossed onto my balmy blue cardstock. And then what I did was I just snipped a little bit off there, worked out how long I needed to have it. I need to trim up my daggy edges. But, and then I would just stick it down and then just trim all of that. So I'm, I'm not sure that I want to use this sentiment again. I might, um, I might use a different one, so I'm not actually going to stick it on there. But I still felt that I needed a little bit of bling, do you know? Like, I don't know, do you put bling on um, mail cards? Do you guys do bling? Of course, you know, you can put as much bling bling as you like on a female card, but guys, guy cards are a little bit different. But um, I was thinking, oh, I'm going to put some, um, first of all, I was going to use the woven threads uh, sequins because there's a nice blue one in there. I think it's not designed for balmy blue, but it would work. And then I remembered that we had our brand new sequins for everything, which is in the Christmas catalogue. And these are full of all sorts of shapes and of sequins. So if I can get the lid off without spraying my sequins everywhere <laughs> wouldn't that be fun in the gold pack here in the gold section there's silk well actually it's not gold there's silver gold uh, little hexagons um, proper sequins and then there's these cool little um, just circles and they're white but they've got a, like a little bit of a I don't know whether you whether that will pick up but as you angle them around they've got a really flat surface on them and they sort of give a mirror you can't uh, the camera's not showing them up properly but i figured that i needed something extra on my card so and i thought well these can be quite masculine because they're just circles um they've all almost like have got a silver sheen but not really and i didn't want to put too many so i don't know whether they look out of place um, if you put them over your work, then they definitely do stand out. But I just wanted them to be subtle. So I'm hoping that it doesn't look too out of place. You could use green. You could put the green ones on the green. Um, or you could use gold or the silver. You could do anything. So I'm just going to adhere them down. Whoops. Dropping things. And then I can come back later on and change my sentiment if I need to. And look, YouTube has been really kind to me. I think this is my fifth YouTube live that I've done. And no joke, every single one of them has either something bad has happened or the screen has pixelated really badly and... It's just been dreadful to watch. So I'm so thankful that that didn't happen today. So if you are creating this on your own and you're doing the texture of the leaves again, that's a little bit different from each other, but that's okay. Just pretend that that one's finished. So you can see here, I, I did cut down this size, left not so much white space around, 
but even just having the little bit of um, layer underneath and just add something a little bit different so but you know when you're on your own take a little bit more time so you can see that my my trees over here are a little bit different to these trees but that's only because I'm in a live situation that I'm rushing through so there is my cards you will find all of the products um, you can order from me through my Stampin' Up! Um, business page uh, you can go via alisatilsner.com or just as you're ordering make sure that you select Alisa Tilsner as your Australian demonstrator and the host the set stamp set that I'm using I'm just going to remind you again because I've got a lot more viewers than what I did at the beginning uh, this one is a host set so once you have sales of either Australian 250 or you know if you want to have a, a little tea a uh, Team gathering that's my team if you want to have a catalog party you're more than welcome to do that I can set you up and uh, so this is a value of uh, you can buy this one for 22 Australian dollars it's valued at 44 Australian so I just want to make sure it's Australian okay so I hope you have enjoyed that it's a little bit more of a an in-depth watercoloring because I've used so many different ink pads um, in your colors have a play add a bit of texture to your cards and I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, if you're not subscribing, do that and hit the bell so that you know when I come in. Um, this has worked really well today, so I'll probably try and do a few more YouTube uh, lives instead, just for a little bit of fun along with my regular YouTubes. Okay, thank you very much for joining me everyone and I'm going to say goodbye and we'll catch you again at another stage. Bye! Oh, now I've got to work out how to switch. <laughs> I've got to work out how to turn off. I don't know. Maybe if I just hit the cross button. I think that's going to work. Bye! Oh, I don't think I have stopped. How...